Bill, what is your role here at the Digital Enterprise Research Institute? I am running the e-learning cluster. I have a team of about 18 to 20 people working for me at the moment. We are um, situated down on the ground floor here at the Dairy Building, and we have uh, basically six different labs set up to uh, organize our, our workload. Um, my job is largely to set the research direction, prompt the uh, innovative thought, hopefully, and to help uh, the uh, PhD candidates and other students here both uh, can follow their research directives and at the same time produce some uh, useful results for us. Bill, can you tell us a little bit about e-learning? Well, e-learning is uh, a pretty broad topic these days. It can range from formal structured courses that you might take if you're working for an enterprise all the way to uh, looking up an article on Wikipedia. Uh, one of the uh, interesting things about this particular role is that we can stretch the boundaries and, and redefine what e-learning is largely as we see fit since almost everything you do on the web is trying to learn from one point of view or another. Much of what we're doing though is concentrating on using formal course content and uh, finding ways to restructure it and deliver it in new and innovative ways that engages pupils, particularly those that are younger and are uh, just joining the enterprise, just joining business, or perhaps are trying to uh, go back into uh, education and pick up a master's or a PhD. Bill, what's the difference between e-learning and e-learning with semantics? With semantics, the e-learning, <coughs> the, the course delivery becomes smarter. It becomes uh, more appropriate to the user. It takes much more into account about the user's skill level, their particular uh, position in terms of uh, their, their skills in, in their job or their, their academic skills. It also tries to take into account uh, their literally, uh, their physical location, their uh, uh, ambient environment, what is the appropriate piece of learning to deliver to them at the, at the appropriate moment. So with semantics, it ceases to be a flat delivery of content in what used to be called a page turner mode and becomes instead a, a much more interactive, much more adapted sort of uh, delivery of content and we're hoping by the time we're done with our research to be producing it in a much more engaging manner and delivering it in something more like a game environment or a discovery environment where it helps to uh, keep the student on track and helps them uh, really enjoy the course more, take more away from it and ultimately retain more. What possibilities do you see the web evolving to beyond semantics? Well ultimately I think the web uh, changes its character and its nature distinctly. Um, we already see some hints of that in things like Second Life and other um, avatar-based virtual environments that are beginning to emerge. Those are being used for e-learning already over in the United States. But I, I think the uh, beyond semantics, the web becomes a sort of um, an, an angel in your ear whispering to you to tell you when things you need to know at the appropriate time. Uh, it becomes a help or an assistant. Uh, it becomes something that is ubiquitous or it's all around us as, as much so as electric power in the walls is around us. Uh, it becomes a, a not so much a matter of what you do with your computer but a collection of computing environments that you interact with in order to accomplish your tasks, make your life easier and find new ways of uh, both learning and interacting with people and ultimately building large social communities that uh, don't really exist perhaps in, in real space, but they definitely exist in this virtual space that we're building.